April will be an exciting month as we are about to experience an extraordinary solar eclipse. This eclipse will not only mark the first new moon of the astrological year, these energies set the tone for the entire year and they also mark the shift into a new era. And why this month is so unique, not only because of the solar eclipse, more on this in a moment. But first a warm, warm welcome here on my YouTube channel. And if you would like to be informed every week what's going on energetically and astrologically and how this can affect you, then subscribe to my free newsletter where I share this information with you every week. And you can find the link direct here under the video. And I also have a member area where you can receive special energy transmissions every month meditations and channelings, please check the link in the description box. This month really stands out and we will see not only a very intense solar eclipse, almost at the same time very important energetic events will take place and will make this month to an energetic firework. And we also saw on March the 25th what happened on the lunar eclipse. A very intense solar flare has taken place. And we also had an earthquake in Germany. And at the same time there were many challenges worldwide, whether it was extreme weather events or the terrorist attack in Moscow. And I also warned in my last video, my Vedic astrology video, that there can be terrorist attacks with the aspect of Mars on Ketu. Ketu is the lower lunar node. And today it is an energy update for the month of April. And for the solar eclipse I will make an extra video the next few days. So please subscribe to my channel if you are interested. But now let's start. What will happen in April? Planet Mercury will play an important role because Mercury is also involved in the eclipse and Mercury will be in retrograde motion for about three weeks from April the 2nd till April the 25th. And very special. Mercury will come back to the retrograde in this retrograde phase in transition over the degrees of the eclipse. Very important. Retrograde planets are always very important and Mercury also stands for our perception, our possibilities to become aware and also our nervous system, how we process informations. And what does a Mercury retrograde really mean? A planet cannot really change its direction, but seen from Earth it looks like as if Mercury is moving away from Earth. But in reality Mercury is much faster than Earth but has his own orbit around the Sun. A retrograde Mercury can bring confusion and a lack of clarity and we can misjudge things and there can be delays. Things maybe do not work out the first time and also problems during travel and transportation or even our technical devices that do not want to work properly, properly, you might know, or can break down. And there can be misunderstandings in communication with a retrograde planet. And something from the past might come up 
and it is important to take a closer look and to correct what is not working in your life, especially if it happens at the same time as the solar eclipse. And like I told you, the retrograde Mercury passes exactly over the degree of the eclipse. And this is really important. And in the beginning of this retrograde phase, Mercury starts in Gandanta. That's also very important because Gandanta are special critical degrees of the zodiac where things can very easily get out of control. And this makes it a very important transit of Mercury this month. And therefore it is also very important to make peace, peace with your past, to heal your old wounds and to forgive whatever is still bothering you so that a great new beginning can happen, to shift into a new era. Mercury also stands for our nervous system and our brain. And during this period, basically the whole month of April, this can lead to more inner restlessness and also problems maybe with the sight, with your eyes, and also everywhere where your nerves play an important role. We must understand that without our nerves, we would not be able to perceive anything in this world. And so it's very important. And also because Rahu, the upper lunar node, is also in the sign of Pisces and also planet Neptune. And this energy cocktail from Mercury, Rahu and Neptune can lead to false perceptions of reality. And Neptune with Rahu is also about drugs and can bring health problems. But on the other side, it is also possible with this special energy cocktail in April, when we have reached a certain level of consciousness, that these energies can lead us to understand a larger context of who we are. And you can use these energies to restructure your life, to shape it new, especially when Mercury and Venus come together around April the 19th, then it is possible that important and sudden realizations can come. And you might deepen the communication with your higher self and your soul. Perhaps you have heard about the Devil Comet, Pons Brooks a periodic comet with an orbital period of 71 years that now is reaching Earth atmosphere. And especially on April the 8th, the day of the solar eclipse, you might can see this comet in the sky, especially in America. And it is called the Devil Comet because it looks like it has two horns and comets have always been very important messengers for great changes. We will see what this omen will bring us. Venus will on April the 1st move into the sign of Pisces and meet Neptune on April the 3rd. And Neptune can amplify the energies of Venus and can bring positive as well as difficult energies. Difficulties can be health problems, especially with the legs and the feet, but also with the heart or the issues of blood pressure, but this a little bit later because when Mars will enter the sign of Pisces. 
and this is I think about the 20, 25th of, um, of April. Venus feels very comfortable in the sign of Pisces and can increase compassion and brother or sisterhood and will increase your ability to feel unconditional love. Venus will be on the 24th, the day of the full moon in Gandanta. And Gandanta is always, like I told you, a very critical, special point of the zodiac between a water sign and a fire sign. And this will happen at the same time when the next full moon will take place on April the 24th. But more about the full moon in a moment. The next important thing, and now it becomes a bit more critical, is planet Saturn and Mars, because both will be at 20 degrees in the sign of Aquarius on April the 10th, two days after the solar eclipse. And Saturn and Mars do not really like each other. The last time they came together was about two years ago, when the war broke out in Ukraine. And before that, in March 2020, the first lockdown due to Corona took place. And this time it happens nearly exact with the solar eclipse. That's really important. And Mars is a planet of energy and action. He has no patience really and can sometimes be stubborn. He wants to act. And Saturn is the poor opposite. Saturn slows everything down and brings obstacles with it. And this can mean that we can have the feeling in some areas in our lives, things are not really moving forward. And if you have a personal Vedic birth horoscope, then look which house it concerns the sign of Aquarius, where Saturn and Mars will come together. And if you do not have a horoscope yet, you can order it in our online shop. And I'm also going to take a look at a few horoscopes from different countries. But one more thing, which is of great importance, and this is planet Uranus. Planet Uranus, which changes the lunar mansion on April the 2nd. And the lunar mansions are unique and very, a very precise method for prediction in Vedic astrology. And they give us more information about the energy qualities. Also in your personal horoscope, then they show you how people behave based on their attitude and give us more information about a person's nature and also on a broader perspective. Uranus is a very slow moving planet and this change of the lunar mansion brings a completely different energy. Uranus stands for our superconscious. Like Neptune and Pluto, they are of a higher frequency, of a higher octave. And Uranus also stands for electricity, something we cannot really see, but it can bring changes, sudden changes, and it can come from above. So Uranus can also stand for our higher self and our connection to our soul, to spirit. But it also can bring an intensification of sudden and unexpected events and maybe the use of bombs, unfortunately. Uranus moves into the lunar mansion Kritika. This is a lunar mansion of the sun. It is an important energy in connection with the awaking process that takes place on earth.
because the sun itself stands for the divine, for all that is, for God. But the symbol of kritika is a knife edge and means it is about polarizing and criticizing and blaming others and also maybe speaking with a sharp tongue. Uranus also stands for rebellion and revolution and together with Jupiter many more people will stand up for their own rights. Uranus stands also for individuality and you no longer want to do what everyone else does. You might not want to follow the crowd anymore. We will see how these energies will play out with Uranus in Kritika. And now we come to this very special conjunction which will take place in April. And the solar eclipse of course is also super important but to pack everything into this one video, it was too much. So I will make an extra video about the solar eclipse the next days. What is this special conjunction that I'm talking about? Exactly on April the 21st, whereby the energies cannot really limit it by one day. But this conjunction stands for something very important and a great shift. A great shift into a new era. On April the 21st, Uranus and Jupiter are at the time exactly both together at 27 degrees and 38 minutes in the first sign of the zodiac, Aries. And these are very powerful planets when they are in a close conjunction and even days or weeks before and after. The last time these two planets have met so exactly in the sign of Aries was in the year 1513. At that time there was a lot of unrest in Europe and Pope Julius II died. This does not necessarily mean that we will experience the same thing this year, but also the horoscope of our current Pope shows also some difficulties right now. And it could be also an important time for him. Jupiter is a beneficial planet. He brings a lot of positive vibes. But these energies can first of all create more chaos. Because Jupiter brings everything into expansion. I have talked a lot about the Great Awakening in 2024. So many people will become conscious like never before because of this direct conjunction. It stands for a spiritual awakening. But above all, the process of awakening can reveal many hidden issues in our psychic. And that is not always easy, you might know, and can lead to make important new decisions. Then we have a full moon on April the 24th at 10 degrees in the sign of Libra in the lunar mansion Swati. This is a lunar mansion of Rahu, the upper lunar node. The sun is thereby in the opposite house in Aries at 10 degrees where we have an important fixed star, Sheratan. This fixed star is connected with danger and it sits in the horns of Aries and can also stand for accidents and immoral behavior and uh, yeah, it's not an easy energy at the next full moon. And you see, we have highly energetic and intense times. 
something positive to conclude before I talk about the US chart and Israel, Ukraine and the terrorist attack in Moscow. Mars moves on March the 23rd into the sign of Pisces, which can reduce the potential for warlike conflicts. At least there is hope that for finding maybe a solution for the worrying parties to find a way out instead of fighting especially because Mercury changes its direction at the end of April. And this can also bring a new perspective and thus a tiny little first step for more peace. Let's hope. But now let's look into a few country horoscopes. What change April could bring? And especially the solar eclipse will play a major role because it is a trigger for major upheavals. And here I have the horoscope of Israel and there the solar eclipse will take place on April the 8th in the sign of Pisces in the seventh house. And the seventh house in a country horoscope stands for the opponents and show that the opponents can be very strong. And the ruling planet of this first house in this horoscope of Israel is always very important because the first house stands for your identity and the country itself. And this ruling planet is Mercury. And Mercury, like I told you, is in Gandanta, a critical zone that is energetically associated with losing control. And the ascendant in the birth horoscope is at 29 degrees in the sign of Virgo. This is the opposite house. And this makes it very important for Israel. And so it is exactly opposite to the, also the solar eclipse on April the 8th which happens at 25 degrees and this um, eclipse is of great importance for Israel. There could be some major challenges come around. For the USA, the solar eclipse will take place in the fourth house and the fourth house is opposite to the tenth house. And that stands, the tenth house stands for leadership the leadership of the country, the president. And the eclipse takes place at 25 degrees in the sign of Pisces and Saturn is in the opposite house at 24 degrees in the 10th house in the sign of Virgo. And this also means it's not an easy time for President Biden when this Saturn is activated by the eclipse degrees. And also K2, the lower lunar node, is also now in transit, sitting next to this Saturn. And this can also cause very quick changes because K2 can cut, can cut things, cut things away. Mars is at the eclipse at 18 degrees in the sign of Aquarius and directly aspecting Uranus in the sign of Taurus in the horoscope, in the birth horoscope. And this could also bring up earthquakes, those intense energies. It does not have to be, but we should, we should prepare and not forget that eclipses trigger very big energetic shifts. And for America, this solar eclipse is particularly very fateful because the path of the solar eclipse runs directly through the country and crosses the path from the last solar eclipse in October. But more on that in the solar eclipse video I will make soon for you.
Then let's take another look at the Ukraine chart, where the solar eclipse takes place in the third house, and it is mainly about communication and the media, especially with Rahu and Mercury there. And this could lead to false information that is spread. And Mars and Saturn are still in opposition to the sign of Leo, where the Sun sits in the horoscope of the Ukraine, in the country chart. And this is the 8th house. And as I said in the energy update for March, this relates to the leadership of the country, that their changes or even difficulties can arise. And we also see at this time current that the support for Ukraine and Zelensky is beginning to crumble. At last, let's take a look at the horoscope of the terrorist attack that happened in Moscow on March the 22nd, short before the lunar eclipse. The terrorist group ISIS attacked visitors in a concert hall near Moscow with more than over 140 persons killed. And it is always important to understand what happened. And at this time, we can make a horoscope for this attack, for this event. And at this time, we have the ascendant, the first house in the sign of Leo. And this means the ruling planet is the sun and the sun was at this moment in the eighth house in the sign of pisces and the eighth house stands for death and tragic events and the moon was in the first house and this also means it is an attack against the people the people of the country and in the 8th house, we also see Rahu. And Rahu stands for really foreign, foreign energies, foreigners. And the sun in conjunction at this time, the sun was in a conjunction with an important fixed star called Deneb Kaitos. And this fixed star can bring misfortune and violence. And there is so much more to say and to see in the horoscope. But I only want to show you that astrology works really fine. We cannot always predict something before and where something will take place. But we can see the energetic connections that are active. That was a small outlook on the impact of the April energies on the countries, but more on that also on my solar eclipse update. One last thing, because next we will have a very important transit, transit of two planets of Jupiter. Jupiter will transit in the sign of Taurus on May the 1st, the first time after 12 years. This is a very important change and also Uranus will follow up in June in the sign of Taurus. But more about that in a next update video. And um, we have really intense energies in April. But that is exactly why we are here now on Earth, to recognize we have the power and the possibilities to overcome difficulties in our lives and to make our contribution for a better world. And it is up to each individual whether, whether you consciously decide this offer, this offer for a completely new era that is now taking place in April with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And you decide if you want to take this next step or to live your life maybe in an old way and with negative beliefs and thinking something in the outside must 
change and you are a victim. So you can decide which way, which road you go. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Subscribe to my channel so you do not miss the solar eclipse update. And I love you.